Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. Last week I had a couple guys down here, buddies of mine from hammockgear.com, which is also based here in Ohio. And they brought down some new products for me to look at and for me to use. And they wanted to give me a little bit of an education at my request on colder weather or winter hammocking. And they brought down some ultralight gear that's set up and created and designed for winter camping. So I want to kind of walk you through this today as I'm taking it down. It's been out here for about a week. I've slept a couple nights in it. It's an awesome setup. And it starts with this Cuban fiber tarp. And this is a large tarp. I'm going to walk you through it here in a minute, but it's got like a 12 foot ridge line on it. And I think it's about nine feet wide. And it's set up right now in a hex, but it also has doors so that you can close it up tighter if you desire, drop it down toward the ground and almost make a tent out of it with the hammock inside. The beauty of this tarp is in its weight. It is an ultra lightweight material. And I'll try to get some exact weights for you guys on a scale of all this gear once I get it packed up. But you're not going to believe how lightweight a tarp like this can be. Now, the sturdiness of this tarp, again, it's been up through a heck of a thunderstorm with high winds just the other night and it did fine. If a tree drops on it, obviously it's going to tear the tarp apart. If you get fire on it or an ember hits it, it's going to burn a hole in the tarp because it's really a Cuban fiber sprayed mylar type material that has a camouflage print on it. But it is a very, very nice tarp and again the weight is the beauty of this thing. So let's kind of walk through this tarp real quick. I'll show you the doors and then I'll show you how it slides into basically a set of net skins to pull it down and pack it up. Okay, like I said, this tarp is set up right now in more of an hexagon configuration. And it's got several tie out points on it to be able to set it up in different configurations. But it also has a set of doors on it. And these tie outs to tie these doors down are nothing more and pieces of the same fabric and I just got them tied in you know like an overhand and it's not even a knot they're just tied over one time and they hold really good against each other so the setup holds really well and then you can unroll this and you basically have a set of ropes inside that roll up and it gives you a set of doors that you can pull down and across to each other with tie outs on that as well. Or you could extend the length of this tarp out further if you wanted to. But set up in this current configuration as a hexagon works really, really well if you're not in the dead of winter. But the advantage to this also is, you know, if you're camping with your wife or whatever and she wants some privacy, she can get that privacy as well. And then I just take, you know, this thing on their suggestion, they showed me how to best utilize all this stuff. And I just roll the ropes up into this thing and roll it down this direction. And the reason you do that is so that any water that comes up in here will collect inside, I'm sorry, will not collect inside the tarp. It basically just runs off the tarp as it goes down. And again, it's just a one simple tie over method. And then you just roll everything up. You've got a small loop of the same material that's actually attached to the tarp that you just shove that tie through. It takes a little finagling the first couple times you do it because it is very, very thin, lightweight material. You pull that through and you tie it off. Now, once I'm in this configuration, which is the configuration that I leave it in most of the time, then I can roll it up into this these snake skins, and I'll show you that right now. Now I had four titanium stakes in the ground to hold this down. Again, this setup is more of an ultra light type setup. So I'm using titanium stakes with reflective cord on them. And I only carry four of them with this setup because I plan on having this thing in this configuration that it's in now the majority of the time. If I were going to do something like make a tent configuration out of it, I'd throw a couple extra stakes in the bag probably. And you could throw a couple in there permanently, and it's not going to add much weight at all if you're trying to stay ultra light. All right, so the beauty of this is that I can 
pull this tarp all to one side of the setup. Pull all the lines over as well, just like this. And then I can come into the corners, grab my ropes, go ahead and roll those up just like this, and then roll this tarp up. But again, the weight of this fabric is amazing, and the flexibility that you have to be able to roll it up on itself to store it into this snakeskin gives you the ability to have the tarp or not have the tarp even when you've got the system set up you can have this tarp completely rolled up and then you can just lay in your hammock in fair weather and not worry about having a tarp over the top of you if you want to sleep at night and watch the stars and all that good stuff you can do all that stuff easy enough just by leaving the snake skin on but folding the tarp back up like this gives you the advantage of being able to store it in this snake skin so that all you have to do is tie it back up to the trees when you're ready to deploy the tarp, pull the snake skin off, and unfurl the tarp. So this snake skin has a drawstring on the opposite end of it. And now I can just come in here and take this trucker's hitch out of my line. That I've got wrapped around my tree, roll this up into any coil that I choose to roll it up into, stuff it right in the end of this snake skin, and it's got a cinch down or tie out right on the end of it to stuff it just like this. And now on the other end of this, I've got one security half hitch in here. I just got to pull out and then I've got a trucker's hitch again on this line that I'll pull out really quick and dirty. And what I do with this one, it's got a smaller end on the snake skin here. And what I do with that is I use this line to tie everything up to put it in the bag. I'm going to show you that right now. So the way this works is now you can configure this and fold this to a desired size for your backpack, depending on how big you want this package to be in your pack, if you want it to be the size of a water bottle or what have you. And then you just roll it down. Again, it compresses very, very small. You don't want to fold this type of fiber from what they tell me. You want to use it more like I'm doing now and just wrap it up. And now I'm just gonna use that line that I have left hanging out of the other end of the snake skin to wrap around this, just like this, a couple times, well, four or five times. And again, this rope binds to itself really, really well. So I can just pull a half inch into it and it's fine. Now, I've got the bag to store this in, which is also made out of that same material right here. And I just slide it down in the bag and it's about the size of maybe a 64 ounce water bottle in total. But I can tell you the weight of this thing is unbelievable. And like I said, I'll try to get this stuff on a scale for you, but it weighs virtually nothing for a full tarp setup for this. Okay, system. so here is our entire tarp system to include six stakes. I put six stakes in this bag when I brought it up here and it's 15.9 ounces, so one ounce shy of a pound for the entire tarp and stake system with the ropes.